Hello, good evening and welcome to News at 10 on TV3. I'm Stephen Enti. Tonight, the time Legon uh, gives government uh, and managers of the Students' Loan Fund a one-week ultimatum to address and settle all loan areas. We have all of these uh, plus uh, a lot more coming up over the next 30 minutes. Let's start with the major news highlights of the day. For the construction of the Tamale Interchange. Under the government of Ghana Sino Hydro Master Project uh, Support Agreement, the intervention is intended to ease vehicular traffic in the Tamale metropolis. An Irish resident of Takwa in the western region are demanding the rehabilitation of roads in what they describe as the mineral-rich town. In a protest, they recounted several promises by different governments to fix those roads. Also, the audit service has served notice to sanction road contractors who fail to adhere to specifications. The Assistant Auditor General Lawrence Ayagiba made this known in an interaction with the media during a tour of some selected road project sites in Accra. On international front, Zimbabwe's President Emerson Manangagwa has pledged to facilitate the exhumation and burial of victims killed in a state crackdown in the 80s. Between 5,000 and 20,000 people in southern Zimbabwe are believed to have been killed by security forces under the rule of the then leader Robert Mugabe in what has become known as the uh, Gukurandu uh, massacres. Those are our major news highlights. I remember we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. Up next is a big one. Welcome back. Now, the University of Ghana wing of the Tertiary Education Institutions Network, TAIN, Lagon, has given a one-week ultimatum to government and the manager uh, of Student Loans Fund to address and settle all loan payments due each student. This follows delays in the disbursement of the student's loan for the 2018-2019 academic year. TAIN, in a statement, maintained the fund managers have in recent times failed in the fulfillment of uh, their part of the contract contractual obligation to pay eligible students their loan amount uh, two weeks after the beginning of each semester relative to the terms and agreement. Right. Uh, we'll be speaking to representatives of uh, TAIN uh, pretty shortly. They'll be joining us in the studio for some uh, discussions on this. Uh, you can follow our live stream on Facebook and hear me live on 3FM 92. Point seven. Uh, welcome back and uh, thank you very much for coming. How is it going for you? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Your yes. students' loans are not in? Well, we are student leaders speak on behalf of many of the students. You haven't received your student loan yet, have you? I have. Personally, you have not. So tell me, you are giving government a one-week ultimatum, failing which, what happens? We're giving government one-week ultimatum to effect payment to all students who have applied for the student loan. Otherwise what? I mean, I, I, that's why I ask, uh, otherwise what? If the government failed, then what action follows next? We have series of action we intend to embark on. You're not going to give me details of that series of actions you intend to embark on? At this stage, it will be premature to disclose. So uh, tell me some of the uh, uh, concerns you have with the Students' Loan Trust Scheme. I know that uh, issuing the ultimatum will be just one aspect of the uh, issues you're bringing forward. But what are your other concerns? Well, like I indicated, we speak on behalf of students. Uh, so these concerns are concerns that students have. And we as student leaders, we are supposed to vo voice out you know, the issues that confront students. And so at this stage, the students are impatient. 
and they are ready to embark on you know series of actions, including a demonstration, if possible. Mm. Yeah. Including a demonstration, I'm I'm very keenly interested in that. But seeing that you are a political wing uh, of the NDC in the tertiary institution, some will say you're just playing politics with this. Is that not what it is? I cannot say for that. Because the reality is that students have applied for their loans mm. and they haven't received it. Is it because we are NDC, we are supposed to shut our mouth? No. I think it is legitimate it is for students to raise those it's, concerns. It is legitimate. But uh, the, when I asked uh, the other concerns you had, uh, I know that as, as a stu a student leaders in, in the school, you represent students on a broader uh, array of issues. I mean, even the, the drafting of the university's uh, council bill, for example, are key issues uh, that are affecting students. So. I am, I am wondering uh, whether you, your only focus for now is the student's loan or your members are saying a lot more than just uh, payments of their student's of loan. Of course, the issue that has come up, issues about you know, government's intended action to you know, have total control by our universities has also become very topical. But at this stage, the concern of students really has to do with their loan amount because a lot of the students really survive on this monies mm. and uh, undue delays really cause a lot of you know disaffection for a lot of the students because some really rely on these monies to pay part of their pay, uh, school fees some you know use it as a means to you know buy books and you know other learning materials and so Delays in such payment really causes a lot of inconvenience for a lot of the students. Mm, I know you possibly may have been engaging uh, management of the Students' Loan Trust Fund. Uh, what feedback are you getting from them in relation to exactly the reasons why uh, loans are not paid on time as stipulated in the agreement students have? Like I indicated in the statement, you know, they continue to tell us a lot of fairy tales that I... When I, you say fairy tale, exactly what do they say for which you think this is fairy tale? Well, they continue to tell you, we are in the process, we are in the process. And to me, it doesn't sound intelligible mm -hmm. for any management what, body. What processes uh, do you usually go through before your funds are released? Yeah, oftentimes, the normal procedure should be after the resumption of you know, academic activity each semester, two weeks after, all payments are made. So really, there's nothing more for you to do apart from the first registration process. I mean, I, I got students' loan uh, when I was in, 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 in tertiary institution. And, uh, uh, and the, the key thing we do usually is to get people who are SNP members and will you know, authorize or, uh, uh, you know, kind of standing for you that the, if in the event that you don't pay up, all those things are done those the things first time you are entering. So uh, after that, there's nothing really for you, the student, to do except to just sit and wait for your money to be paid. Precisely. So be beyond just telling you uh, we are in the process, uh, nothing more? Really, our investigation has revealed it is, you know, government's inability to release funds mm -hmm. to the student loan trust that has accounted for this delay. So yeah, that is why we are appealing to government that it is the responsibility of government to ensure that it does the honorable thing by releasing funds to the Student Loan Trust Fund to effect payment to students. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ten um, Zaite, represent Ten uh, University of Ghana, Lagos. I'm Stephen Anti. You can hear me live on 3FM 92.7. We're streaming also live on Facebook. We'll be right back with more news. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, President Takufuado has cut salt for the construction of the Tamale Interchange under the Government of Ghana Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement. The intervention is intended to ease vehicular traffic in the Tamale metropolis. The launch of the Government of Ghana Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement and sword cutting for the construction of the Tamale Interchange marks the official commencement of the $1.5 billion infrastructure project across the country. The Tamale Interchange is expected to link the Kumasi Road through the Point 0.7 Road, the Central Taxi Rank, 
the Central Market intersection with the Malcolm Road and Bogatanga Road. The Roads and Highways Minister, Kwesia Mwakwata, reiterated government's commitment to improve road infrastructure across the country. President Ikufuado is confident the project will see Ghana experiencing a significant change in its road infrastructure. Each of the 16 regions is set to benefit from the Sino Hydro arrangement with hospital projects, extension of electricity to rural communities, and construction of court and residential buildings for the judicial service, landfill sites, and industrial parks set to be undertaken. The president again outlined areas where the project will benefit. Construction of Accra inner city roads, a total of 84 kilometers of roads located in Trobo, Anyasa Utwo, Doma, Kwabinya, Adenta, and Teshi will be constructed. Lot 2, construction of Kumasi and Mampong inner city roads. A total of 100 kilometers of inner city roads will be constructed in Kumasi and Mampong. In Kumasi, the effective road networks are in Menshia, Swami, Tafo, Tankono, Asokwa, Kwadaso, Ufurikro, Subi, Ishayasu, and Bantama. The president charged the sector ministry to ensure the project are completed within the 30 months schedule. Meanwhile, the ranking member of the Roads and Transport Committee in Parliament, Kwame Abuja, is accusing the government of deliberately concealing figures in the contract. Uh, but uh, speaking on News 360, Chairman of the Survey Committee of the Ghana Institute of Surveyor, Surveyors, uh, Obing Ayirebi, maintained that the institution's duty conducted, uh, duly, I beg your pardon, conducted a value for money audit on the entire Sino Hydro project and submitted a report to the Roads and Highways Ministry on April 4. The value for money uh, audit was referred to the institution sometime in December last year, and some of our members worked on that. I see. Yes. So the there's value a value for, for money yes. audit on the tamales Yes, the value for money audit was done. I, I wouldn't want to uh, narrow it to the tamale interchange alone. Mm. Is the Sino Hydro project? So all, virtually all the all projects, the, the value for money, and all the other yes, infrastructure and, yeah, projects. Yeah, we have the competences. Yeah, we have the competences, and some of our members were involved in the value for money audit for the Sino project in total. The two billion dollars. Yes. So every infrastructure project, you have been involved in drafting or doing a value of money. Value for money, it. as and when it is referred to the institution. Uh, mind you, as a professional body, periodically uh, such requests are referred to us, both from the government agencies, from private organizations, even religious organizations. It's not only for value for money. A whole range of professional services uh, are usually referred to the institutions. And uh, when it comes, uh, normally the president constitutes the committee and all the various professionals in them, their, their expertise are taught uh, to be able to come out with proper value for money. Okay, but so which which institution or government agency did you make the report available to? For this one particular, is the Ministry of Roads and Highways Ministry that brought highways. the request in right. far way back in December. So you completed the value for money audit for this project way back in December. No, oh, I think the from I'm just from the uh, secretariat. I, I think the report, the draft final report, uh, was sent submitted to the ministry somewhere fourth uh, April. If my of April. yes, of April this year. I see. Yes. And so some work has actually that's about gone on. five days ago. Fourth April, yeah. Before this the final draft. The final yeah, draft for for the Sino uh, uh, Sino Hydro project. We is it's not a singling out. You, you, you see. Right. The, the, it's a whole component. You see, if you are doing value for one, like I, I in this started, we're not looking at just the cost. Anybody who says value for money is cost, that person probably don't well, understand well, but, but, but the, cost the extent for the cost component. There are cost components, okay. but you see, a project right. might cost, uh, say, one million. Somebody will look at, oh, this is expensive. No value for money. When you speak like that, then it means you lack some knowledge. Right.
Right. Now, unpaid beneficiaries of the, the Nation Builders Call, NAPCO, initiative have officially served notice of an intended demonstration uh, this Friday. Leadership of the group in a statement to all NAPCO trainees nationwide and sympathizers said the decision to protest remains uninterrupted. The decision follows the delay in payment of the allowances from November last year till date. The coalition also raised issues with delay in placing other members who have equally uh, undergone training under the program. All right, so uh, let's get onto the telephone lines and speak with Nana Berima Esamoa, the national president of the coalition of NAPCO trainees. Uh, he joins us now. Uh, good evening, sir, and thank you extremely for your time. So I am concerned that uh, as graduates on the scheme, the scheme which you have earlier told me it's good, uh, you are now protesting because a few months have not been paid. I want to find out whether this is that bad. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, sir, once again. In fact, we agreed the demonstration based on inconsistency of the starting statement. And as we are speaking to, there has been a realistic statement of several starting. And as we are speaking to, today we had an encounter from a protocol officer from the NAPCO. In, on three trainings, and he emphatically stated that the NAPCO is not over anyone. No, I, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I, I conducted that interview. He didn't say that. He disputed yes, the fact he that uh, you I, claim that uh, NAPCO owes up to five months. He said uh, they've yes, paid all their five, arrears five except months. for one month. And that most of the challenge that comes from non-payment is as a result of you graduates not uh, completing no. the processes that uh, you are supposed to go through in order for your mm. payments to hit your accounts. Hello, hello, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Please, let's correct something here. I raise an allegation that I have some trainees, my trainees. Some of them, they haven't paid for the past five months. And he countered my allegation that NACO is not only in one with five months. Arrears. And I'm ready to call it. I, after now, they are mystically releasing the great titans. And up to now, I have some of my colleagues who are seriously lamenting. They've been subjected to numerous updates on the portal. Right. And again, they file their details to the district directly. But up to now, they haven't received... Right. Uh, Nanea Nan Barima, we, I don't want us to go through the same process we did earlier on uh, radio with counter-accusations here and there. So you made your point that uh, some of you have not been paid way back as five months. So let, let's hear from uh, Salifu Idrisu. Protocol. I mix your name up, forgive me, uh, but uh, you are the regional uh, monitoring and evaluation and legal affairs officer. So the graduates are not happy because they have not been paid. He says some of their members have not been paid as far back as uh, five months back. Uh, you dispute that? Yeah, I, I think that um, I'm glad. First of all, let me start by saying that, of course, I'm glad that you were able to, uh, as, as it were, ensure that, of course, he doesn't go tangential. I think that uh, when we first of all had that conversation with you, I made it very clear to you that, look, NAPCO is a, 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 I mean, a, it's a work in progress to such an extent that this became a very serious issue. So, and for that matter, the good people of Ghana needed an alternative where we are able to solve the hydra headed problem that confronts so the So let's take it step that by step. You said it's a work in progress. So, so but that doesn't justify why you, uh, people work and they are not paid. Yes. So, so you see, um, in terms of the payment, as we speak now, we have actually paid, you know, about eight, eighty thousand one hundred and. 57 trainees as we speak today. When was this payment effect? I mean, it started from yesterday, and even as we speak now, payment are still even ongoing. Now, that particular issue of uh, uh, areas in terms of the stipends, as we speak now, we have been able to validate, and then, of course, those particular, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, uh, March 
payments would be done within mm. the within so, so the challenge time. of payments is um, also due to the challenge with validation and that each month the graduates need to validate i would have been very happy if you would allow me to walk through the, through the process mm. now the nature in which you know napco operates is, is such that there are so many ways by which we try to uh, do the validation process. So for example, it is not even NAPCO that actually physically pays. We have ceded that particular responsibility to, uh, to uh, uh, how do they call it? To GIPS, mm -hmm. you know, Ghana Interbank mm -hmm. pay uh, payment, payment and Settlement System. system. Mm -hmm. So if for example, we, because we've been confronted with that challenge, where, you know, some beneficiaries, we actually, as it were, ask them to give us, or if you like, furnish us with their particulars about their issues. Now, it will interest you to know that some of them decided, I don't know, I mean, what kind of reason actually goes into that. Some of them decided to, as it were, give NAPCO their friends and their families or their relatives so use which numbers. Can't. Now, when uh, 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 Gibbs is actually going to do the payment, it would have to match that particular, you know, uh, 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 inputs that we've given to them to the to the issue. Now, if it doesn't tally, of course, okay. this government I would think not this just. Is a very important thing. If it doesn't it's, tally, it's fair for us to put this to uh, Nana uh, Berima Esamwa, who, who is on the line. So, Nana, the explanation we're getting is that many of you mm -hmm. are supposed to provide e-switch cards, which uh, through which the Ghana. Uh, interbank uh, payment systems, GIPS, will pay to your e-switch accounts. But uh, what we're hearing is that many of you now resort to using friends and family members' e-switch cards to make the payment, and that makes it difficult for validation to take place. Mm -hmm. do, did, did your members tell you about some of these uh, uh, practices they've been engaged in, which obviously yeah. is the reason why their payments, their stipends have delayed? Okay. Exactly. I think my colleague has been justifying inefficiencies on the part of the, the Secretariat. If I want to drag this back, the NAP, NAPCO, the Secretariat, they haven't been proactive on certain things. Even from the onset at the verge of dispatching first batch payment, they told us to refer, they contemplated that such issues were happening. It's likely to happen. So they told us to go back to the district directory to file all, the, all those details there. So some of us, that is recently, we had a committee from most of the uh, district coordinators. Mr. Zama, Mr. Zama, you're giving me a long uh, line of explanations. What I want you to do uh, is to tell us in clear uh, uh, terms uh, whether you know uh, of I your think, members, graduates, who I have issued build, wrong e-switch cards for payments. Uh, sir, I wanted to build a point from there. Well, we don't have, we don't have the whole day, uh, so you have to limit uh, the, the discussion so that we can wrap up on this. The fact is, the fact is some of us, we had no issues with, with regard to our details. But still, we had the pop-up message from NAPCO that we are still having problems. I personally, I had an encounter with my bankers. I can even give you my, my, my manager's line. I had an encounter with them. That why is it that I've been recording all these issues? Because anytime I verify my details from the portal and what I file it right. at the district, everything is uh, uh, in intact. And again, with regard to those who recorded issues like wrong U.S. We have been subjected to persistent validation as the district directory. Even recently, about one month ago, they opened the portal for us to take advantage wow. and validate all those things. But up till now, if the stipends are not coming, it is purely inefficiency. On the right. Uh, Mr. Berry, Mr. Moore, thank you very much uh, for your time. You've made your point. Quick reaction and then we're out uh, of here. I think that he has even uh, justified the reason why this particular validation exercise ought to be done. Well, he says because, that it's out I mean, of inefficiencies uh, so, 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 you see, if you were to look at, you know, the kinds of uh, policies that, you know, actually were, were mooted to be able to solve the problem of youth unemployment, a classical example is the youth and I mean the what is it called youth employment situation that we had you know in the LSY uh, 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 NDC administration. We saw the kind of financial malfeasances and issues 
of that nature. So we thought that, look, as a government, we needed to ensure that we, you know, uh, we, we, make, we take certain actions to be able to, as it were, protect the public purse. So if you, are, you would not be patient enough for, for right. NAPCO to I'm, be able, I'm afraid that to, be able to, to wrap up to, uh, Yes, I'm wrapping up. So no, I, 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 I think that uh, you, must, you must listen Absolutely. to me on no, this. I've it's to it's you very important. And, uh, so that is the reason why NAPCO would have to do this particular validation exercise. So if you are a beneficiary and you choose not to, of course, then you are the one to be blamed. No, it is the beneficiary because at the end of the day, you are the you are the person working. Right, uh, so we want to make sure that look, you would not just I'm take any that money that you have go. not Thank earned. You, very much you understand? For, so these uh, are the problems coming, that uh, some of them would have to. Protocol is uh, the regional reorganize uh, monitoring and evaluation and legal affairs officer of NAPCO. I'm Stephen Enti, and thank you all for making time to be with us. On, the, on behalf of the crew, good night. There's more news at 3news.com.